Good, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Roger McMillan. I'm a master's student in uh, rural sociology at the University of Alberta, working with uh, Dr. Brenda Parley. On, uh, uh, I've been working mostly in, in Fort Good Hope uh, in the NWT on community hunts and uh, food sharing. And so this morning I will relate uh, my thesis uh, results to, um, I'll speak to those in terms of uh, the social economy. Uh, so, as we know, uh, the social economy includes uh, economic activities that are not state-driven, that are done at the local scale or at the smaller scale and are uh, not for profit. Um, so, and one of the Sunoka goals is to understand, you know, how these things function, what do they, what do they do, how do they work in different circumstances. Um, so, from from my work, uh, I'll be looking at a community hunt in terms of. Um, um, Contributing to the social economy, uh, community hunts in Fort Good Hope are uh, are done uh, without sort of profit in mind, and, and it, it sort of aligns with the um, these sort of social economy characteristics. Uh, the second part of my work on food sharing networks uh, is really sort of in line with David Natcher's research focus, and uh, I'll be comparing how food is distributed after uh, a community hunt with how food is distributed um, after people go hunting uh, for themselves and for their households. Um, so this is trying to look at how, how the networks work, maybe in different circumstances. Um, so my methods included basically going to Fort Good Hope and hanging out for about six months. Um, in 2009, I went up for the first time, and, uh, or the second time actually, and then attended a community hunt. Uh, so we went out to uh, Tabasco Lake and spent nine days out there harvesting, and then I did uh, interviews with the organizers of that hunt and talk to them about what they were trying to accomplish when they organized the hunt and with participants about what sort of benefits they, they got from it. Uh, and then I went back the following year and looked at uh, the, the hunt in 2010, how it was organized and similarities and differences and also got a sense of sort of uh, longer term trends a, a little bit in, in hunt organization. Uh, in terms of the food sharing, I looked at uh, did uh, interviews with uh, with participants of the hunt and talked to them about who they you know shared out food with, and I did that for the participants of the community hunt and also um, a sample of hunters going out themselves for that comparison, uh, and then I also interviewed uh, some of the recipients of food, um, which was good for validation and also checked for uh, redistribution. People receive meat, but then they share it on further, of course, um, and I don't get too much into that data here, but but that was that was done. So some background about Fort Good Hope, uh, it's a Dene community, of about uh, a cash open Dene community of about 600 people. Uh, it's on the banks of the Mackenzie River, more or less at the, at the Arctic Circle. And people make their livelihoods there through, uh, through a mixed economy of, of wage work and also hunting and fishing and trapping. Uh, and then moose and caribou, uh, woodland end and bearing ground caribou are, um, are you know, species that are um, probably most important uh, in terms of the hunting. Uh, so community hunts there, uh, I've been sort of fiddling around with, with definitions of, of a community hunt and this has sort of been what, uh, what I've been working with most recently, I guess. Uh, so I'm looking at a community hunt in terms of a collective hunt that involves support or su support from or coordination through community institutions that's designed to benefit the larger community. Um, and there, there's a, one of the things that came out of my interviews, but there's, there's lots of different ideas about how the community hunt benefits the community. So it's, it, um, but people were, were fairly in line in, in that uh, they expected it to benefit the larger community. So from, from talking to people, it seemed like the first formal community hunt in Fort Good Hope anyway was, was done in the 1970s when there was a particular shortage of food in the winter and uh, a group of harvesters were organized by the chief and council. Uh, and and uh, they basically coordinated a, a collective effort um, whereby people went by dog sled out uh, to Coble Lake and harvested, uh, harvested bearing ground caribou. Now at that point there was no subsidy for the harvesters, it was just sort of a coordination um, effort. Uh, currently, in the last four years, community hunts are typically uh, subsidized uh, in terms of their travel, so there would be money for a, a, a charter flight or um, boats, uh, whatever, or subsidies for fuel. And then Harvesters are not paid uh, in Good Hope typically for for um, community hunts, so they're you know volunteering their time, uh, supplying much of their own equipment, 
and, uh, and but there's no no sel no selection um, at least in the last four four hunts people um, people sign up so it's uh, it can be very very flexible there's lots of different things that can happen uh, with, with how community hunts are organized and where, where they go so th these are some of the areas that uh, have been considered or for community hunts or have Hunts have been done there. Uh, in 2009, we went to Tabasco Lake down the lower left, um, and that was also the site of a hunt in 2008. Uh, in 2007, they had gone to uh, Hume River, and then in 2010, they were, the hunt in 2010 actually didn't happen, but they were considering uh, places like Sansu, Little Chicago, um, even uh, going up to Sikachik uh, and onto the Dempster. In some years, uh, people from Fork and Hope have joined, people from Coal out at Horton Lake, um, which is probably one of the more expensive options because it's, it's, uh, the, the travel is, is uh, um, quite costly by, by plane. Um, and then you can see Coal Lake there in the 70s, so that would, be the, um, that would have been the area that they would have gone in, in the 70s. Um, the, the reasons, like the, the dynamics of hunt organization are really complicated, and I won't get into too many of them here. Um, but in terms of deciding where to go, there's a lot of ecological factors that people are taking into consideration, where the animals are, what their understandings of animal health uh, is. Um, you've got budgets to consider um, who wants to go on these hunts, what are they looking for. Um, an area like Tabasco Lake, which is um, difficult to access, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite distant from the community and it's up in the mountains, um, also provides a pretty unique ar array of, of different animals to hunt. Um, and that can be particularly attractive uh, for, for some if, if you have the budgets and, uh, and the willingness to go there. So there's a lot of complexity around, uh, around hunt organization. Um, so looking at what the hunts uh, contribute uh, to the community, uh, I came up with comparing the, the four hunts, it was, there was a lot of consistency uh, in what people would report uh, in terms of what they were getting out of the hunts. Uh, one was reconnecting to important places on the landscape, like I just mentioned at Tabasco Lake. I mean, that the background picture is, is kind of, um, it is from that spot, it's, it's just gorgeous. Um, it's also the site of a, a traditional trail that used to run into the, or still does run into the Yukon, um, and people used to trade across that trail, and there's lots of family connections as well, but people don't get there that often. Um, these days because it's distant from the community, it's a difficult place to access. So a community hunt is being used as one way of, of maintaining this connection uh, with this particular spot. Um, and related to that is also bringing elders and youth onto the land together. Because um, when you do that and when you go to these uh, you know, particular, particularly special locations, you, you know, that's, that's tra traditional knowledge um, uh, teaching uh, opportunity. You have elders who have knowledge about these areas, uh, younger people who are learning this, uh, and, and this landscape-specific knowledge that otherwise you know, would be uh, more difficult because it's just harder to get there uh, as a family or something like that. Um, in addition, I mean, bringing elders and youth on the land together you know, you, is, a, is an opportunity for learning uh, you know, proper harvesting techniques, proper meat processing techniques. Uh, traditional medicine. So, it's, so it's, you know, you're bringing a community onto the land is, is essentially the goal. Um, and within that, uh, people, especially participants, talk about working, you know, closely together as a group, and that being uh, a very um, uh, fulfilling experience for them in town. With, you know, a, lo a lot of people have, you know, so they see town negatively uh, in many ways. It, it can be a place of stress, and being on the land is, is. Um, uh, definitely seen as an escape from that, and, and also, uh, you know, it's, it's cathartic and, and a positive experience where everybody works together. Um, with the subsidy involved in the community hunt, it's also an opportunity for people who don't have their own harvesting equipment uh, to get out and harvest for themselves. Um, if you don't have a boat, you don't have a skidoo, um, or even if you don't have, have rifle and gear, you, you can borrow you know, rifle and equipment and, and still get out and harvest your own meat. So particularly for people who, you know, maybe younger people or, or older elders who can't spend six hours on a skidoo anymore, these are opportunities for them to get out, out onto the land and, and harvest. 
Um, and that's a, that's a very good feeling for them. Uh, and of course, the community hunt provides meat uh, for, for the community and uh, bring back, brings back a bunch of meat that can then be distributed. So the second half of my uh, work was looking at how this meat distribution happens. Um, and so to compare characteristics between two different types of hunting, I, I had to pick a characteristic to compare. And the one I settled on was looking at, at how these interactions are conducted. Um, request sharing is basically asking for, for, for food, and then you know, giving would be uh, sharing that's not asked for. And it's not to say that people in the communities really think about these two things differently. Um, it, it's more for the purposes of um, sort of academic theory, uh, which does make a pretty clear separation between these two things. For the community, it's all sharing, it's all good, and, uh, and everybody's being generous, no matter sort of what happens. Um, so I'll look at those, those two characteristics and then the network analysis uh, as well. So to compare these hunts, uh, just a very quick background. Uh, the hunt of Tabasco Lake uh, went by aircraft, nine days, uh, 15 participants, about 1,500 kilograms of meat, uh, minus what we ate on the hunt, and uh, about 10 households were allocated meat uh, after that. Um, and then the second hunt uh, was in November of 2009. It was uh, basically a group of harvesters going, uh, you know, a harvester would go out for a weekend, come back, and then you know another harvester would go out. They weren't coordinated. Um, hunts would, would uh, last one to three days, typically. And uh, there was about... Um, I, I was trying to make sure that these two samples had the, uh, an equivalent amount of meat uh, in terms of being able to compare them fairly. Uh, and as far as I could estimate, uh, about 28 barangay caribou equals roughly the same amount of meat as, as uh, four moose, three mountain caribou, and, uh, and one sheep. Um, and there were seven harvesters. There's a lot of complexity around edible weights. It's, uh, it's a nightmare. But uh, <laughs> there was seven households uh, that were um, um, received meat out of those hunts. And, uh, and I also actually I, I joined one, <coughs> one hunter, or two hunters out to Coval Lake for um, when they were going for bearing or caribou, which was pretty cool. So, uh, to compare them, in terms of, uh, okay, there are 57 uh, incidents of sharing in, in each one of the hunts that I was able to, um, uh, people were, were comfortable talking to me about, which was also another issue. But, um, so these interactions are, are ones for which I know who, uh, somebody reported a specific recipient. There was a lot of people talking about, yes, I, I do share, I have shared, I will share which I couldn't really include in the sample, so these are specific interactions that I, I were, um, were well known, I guess. Um, and there's a lot of sharing. Uh, I'm not, it wouldn't be fair to say that there is exactly an equal amount of sharing in both of these cases, but it's, it's significant in both cases. Um, and the darker colors there are, are gifts of meat, the lighter colors there are requests for meat. Um, and so you, you do see some difference in uh, in, uh, in the community hunt, there were more people asking for meat. Um, but at the same time, you know, in both cases, there was more giving uh, going on. So the, the separation in, in terms of the colors here as well looks at who the recipients were. Um, I forgot to mention in the previous slide that in the community hunt, everybody talked about elders and single mothers and people in need being the the people who most needed the meat from the community hunt. One of the, one of the reasons the community hunt was important was to provide meat for elders, single mothers, and people in need. So I separated those out, uh, that, that demographic out, in, in this analysis. And the red is, uh, is people in need who, who requested meat. And, uh, and then the, the light blue is, uh, is gift, gifts of meat to people who, uh, elders and, and those in need. So the community hunt, Everybody's um, on board with this uh, idea that elders and single mothers should get meat from the hunt. And then you see that those people also requesting meat um, to a larger extent after the community hunt. So my sort of way of explaining this is to say that you know, everybody is sort of unanimous in that these people are more eligible for meat. And, and you know, if, if they haven't received it uh, through gifts, you know, 
they have an option to ask for it to a greater extent than maybe they would uh, when harvesters go normally. Uh, in terms of the network characteristics, uh, you can also see that reflected in the centrality of um, elders, households, and those in need within the sharing networks. So elders and those in need would be the darker circles. Um, and there's 31 households uh, with elders and, and those in need who are recipients of meat in the, house, in the community hunt network versus 19 in the other network. Um, so elders and, and people uh, in need are getting meat in both cases, but the centrality of them within the network suggests that they're better looked after um, after the community hunt. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but the darker lines are the requests. And um, without going into sort of too much analysis, if, if you made the assumption that if you didn't ask for meat, you wouldn't have received any, you see that the request really would change the nature of the network. And so um, my thesis is all about sort of resilience and stuff, but people are able to change where they fit in terms of these networks by requesting. Um, which sounds so simple, and yet it's taken a thesis to get there. <laughs> um, and, and so that's important. I mean, people have, have this option, they're eligible in, uh, after the community hunt to, to request meat if they need it. And, uh, and people obviously are um, uh, happy to, to oblige that. Um, so my thesis talks about how community hunts contribute to resilience. Um, they in terms of the benefits, a lot of those are, I mean, important for people's social uh, well-being. Uh, they're important for the uh, continuation of traditional knowledge that sort of underpins communities' abilities to react uh, and respond to ecological change. Um, they're important for cultural continuity, and uh, and, and all of those things are, are good uh, in terms of community resilience. Um, they also provide food. To, to communities, and the distribution of that food is really complicated, but it really does um, go to people who might be more food insecure, elders and people who, uh, single mothers, people in need. Um, and yeah, you see, you see some complicated dynamics around uh, this particular opportunity of a community hunt, which um, the argument would be it has different sharing characteristics than uh, people going hunting for themselves, but there's plenty of sharing going on in both cases, and, uh, and sharing is, is one of the central features of, um, of, of Fort Good Hope, I would say. Thanks very much.